Welcome to Nick Education, and you can see I have a little guest with me today, my redheaded friend. This is Victoria Thurman Hall, and actually she works here at the Wells Studio. We're at the Wells Studio today in LA. You can't really see it. I mean, we got like a white background, but there's this massive, beautiful room we're working in. And my, so we do a lot of shows together, actually, here. Yeah, we do. Um, she's my colorist, and and actually, she does a lot of the up styles for me when we do shows that she specializes in. She's amazing, and she's here today, and she's going to do a color with us. This is our model, Jolene. And uh, what are you doing for us today? Well, I'm taking Jolene from uh, having regrowth and eliminating that, really lightening her up and making sure that her hair has a great base to start. And then I'm going to add some dimensions, some warm and cool tones going throughout it underneath, kind of a little peekaboo going on. Beautiful base on top because uh, I find that blondes are the, some of the hardest things for people to really get good at. So I've got some great tips and some tricks. To, for I got, Jolene. I got a question for you. What's and, that? And the thing that's interesting is this. A lot of people, like, you know, sometimes they don't do hair shows. And I hear all the time, well, you're lucky you get to do a hair show and do a video. But people don't realize that models you have to work like with you? Jolene, <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> like models like Jolene, I mean, there's, it's, still like a, it's still like a client situation in a different way, isn't it? Absolutely. So, like, Jolene came in, she wanted her hair freshened up. We just trimmed it up a bit for the, uh, for the color video today. But you had pre-existing color here. So what was your uh, thought process on, you know, because yeah. that's where your starting point is, right? So could, could you talk about that a little bit? Absolutely, because one of the things is whenever we have a model or we do any model work, we still have to treat them like a client because it's what they want as well as what we want together. So there's always that meeting in the middle. So Jolene comes in and she's been having uh, highlighting or heavy lightning going on through her hair. And she has very fine hair. It's a really tiny texture. So she had some damage with that. But I really wanted to create a great base so that we could go through and put the color on and have the color coming through in its best light. And so talking to Jolene, it was, can you and will you, just like a consultation that you're gonna do in the salon, because you know, I, my first thought with Jolene was like, oh, let's do some fun colors, but she's a working model. She's a working actress, and I can't go against what her headshots are because she needs at least some semblance of con continuity between everything. Well, I mean, I think that would be really great for, you know, most of the uh, members on my website because they work on clients. Yeah. And um, could they use, like, you're going to use a technique, which is... Yeah, it's, it's great because it's going to have... Color a, blocking, Yeah, right? color blocking and utilizing a veil to, so that all those colors aren't on top. And this can be structured not just for blondes, but it can also go for your brunettes who want a little pop of color. So it's utilizing you know, maybe a technique that's the economic buster because we're gonna have a veil over the top and then we're gonna go through the sides and the back with the color that comes from underneath. So you can always reverse this and give it to your clients to where they have the opportunity to have um, you know, an up service for yourself, but it's an easy transition, be it light or dark. Um, so the thing that's cool about it is, because I, I mention this all the time to uh, my members, because sometimes they get caught up in the haircut. Mm -hmm. And I always try to say there's so many techniques that go into one look. So this is something, it's not, they can use, if they focus on a technique, they can change the tones a little bit they can change like their base color a little bit. So it's gonna be something that they can work with. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, I, I kind of shying away from technique on a head and I'm more technique is what I do with my body, where I stand, how I hold my comb. And it's the effect that I create on my clients and on my models. I wanna make sure that they understand that I'm not just doing a technique, I'm not doing a recipe, I'm formulating for them and I'm creating an effect for them. That's kind of interesting. I mean, I never heard you say that before, that your body position is important for coloring hair. Well, I, you know. I mean, I say that a billion times when it comes to cutting hair, but I never really knew that was like important for coloring hair. 
Well, there's a couple. I mean, you. I mean, Nick, you've coached me a lot on my cutting, and you know, it's all about your body and how you stand. So, same thing. If your elbows are up and you're really pushing your shoulders up, not only are you going to have some, you know, off sh shoots of where your body is, but at the end of the day, you're going to be really fatigued and tired. I was one of those people that was standing incorrectly, maybe you know, moving my body in a position that wasn't. Um, ergonomic and well, also too like it, it's interesting because whenever your body's out of whack your tools are are never in the right place it's hard to whether it's a, a coloring brush or uh, working with a comb Absolutely. or putting in foils when you're when your hands and your body's out of whack you, you can't you can't place you can't get your tools in the right spot all right all right I've been talking way too much here so we're going to get started on our hair coloring technique and we'll be back in a few. All right.